It is Rocky Tiger here coming at you with episode 30 on the Beyond Vanilla server and we are continuing our world tour video series today. We're going to be going up through the north tunnel through our nether hub which is what I wanted to take a look at first because I love it. I think it's pretty nice. Look at this nether hub. Isn't that a lovely nether hub? I like it. It is fantastic. Uh, I wish I had a whole lot more to talk about it, but I don't really. Uh, it's a... Uh, well, I think Admiral Ara did most of the work on the nether hub here, but I'd have to double check. Um, just, it's, it's the hub. There's not much to talk about other than the fact that we've got the different four cardinal directions determined or listed out with the tunnels going out in different directions, and everyone's bases are built off of these. So this is actually the first tunnel that got constructed this season on the Beyond Vanilla server, and this was actually my tunnel. This is uh, the tunnel that my base is down, so we'll take a look at that. And this first section was all done up with all the prismarine bricks because if you look down there, we'll get to it in a minute, we've got our guardian farm off down this direction. Uh, another thing about this video real quick before I get too far into it is that I'm gonna be trying to do this all in a single take with a single video, no cuts, no anything. Um, since we're in creative mode, it should load up all the different areas pretty quickly with hopping through different portals. So we're going to see if we can just kind of do it as one long rambling video, uh, just because I am tired and I really don't want to have to put that much effort into the editing process. But again, this is one of the earlier things that got built on the server. This uh, tunnel actually predates the hub itself. And let's just uh, kind of jump into it. Looks like first up we've got Aliverts' base, so uh, off down here we'll go and take a look. I think I've been out here before, but I'm not 100% certain. Oop. Yes, I have. Aliverts' base was built in a ravine, and I remember trying to do a world tour video once and going through this area, and I uh, really didn't know what to talk about, so we'll just kind of uh, jump into this. This is a ravine that was kind of at the edge of what looks like a roofed forest and a, a desert area. And I saw these arches here the other day, which I thought was a really cool kind of entrance. Looked like the idea was that people could come in. Oh, I'm flying. They could come in from the water. We're going to hop in this boat and uh, we're going to try and hop in this boat. Can I? I'm. I've been playing a lot of uh, other games recently, so I keep on pressing E to hop into uh, or to activate stuff. So I think I've, I've, I've been playing Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, and uh, E is the button that you would press to activate anything, and so that's, that's going to throw me off for a little bit. Right click, right click, you fool. Anyways, it looks like the idea was that you would just come right through these uh, giant arches and that would take you up into this dock area where then you could hop out and come down into the main part of the base. I have tried to do ravine bases before and it is not easy. It, it is way more difficult than you might think. It is, it is just a tremendous chore to try and actually break up the monotony of the different areas. But this one looks pretty cool. Looks like we've got some minor, it's just a, uh, it's wheat. So we just have a couple of wheat things. Looks like it's more of decoration, not necessarily for farming. Um, that's kind of nifty. Looks like we got a bed there. You know, we'll go ahead and sleep just because it is nighttime. And uh, I know I'm in creative mode, but I, I just, I'd rather not have the night. I like the, the daylight. It's, it's scary at night. Pretty interesting. Lots of bushes, uh, vines, whatever you want to call them. It's leaf, leaf blocks. And it doesn't look like a whole lot's been done uh, external. It's mostly just a external. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't look like this base has a whole lot of actual structure built to it. It's more of trying to be more of a terraforming type of base with uh, incorporating the natural build and the natural formation of this ravine. We've got a nice little storage area over here. And if we move on down, I think, yeah, we've got the ravine that heads off in multiple directions. Uh, just a really kind of natural looking base. Not too much to see here, so let's go ahead and move on to whatever's next. Oh man, the lag is real. 
Well, more of the bad ping is real. Actually, I actually have a pretty decent connection right now, but my ping is still going to be horrible. Next up is Admiral Ara's base. This base I've been to multiple times, and it has changed multiple times. Uh, I think I still have the video loaded up um, where I did a... I did a uh, quick video with it uh, using the replay mod, which I'm not using right now, sorry, all over the place right now. Again, it's late and I'm trying to get through this video pretty quickly to document what the Beyond Vanilla Season 2 server looked like, but it was completely different and I'll see if I can add maybe a little bit uh, over, we'll just say it's going to be over in the top left section of the screen. So we're not going to cut, we're just going to put picture in picture because we have the technology. And I'm going to show off a little bit of what it used to look like. Um, maybe just a couple of screenshots here and there, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. It depends on how my internet is doing because I'll still need to actually render that video and yeah, I don't know how replay mod will work with my horrible internet connection that I have here. But it was uh, none of this greenery. It was very, very almost uh, Fallout sort of vault-like looking, very andesite and smooth stone all over the floor if I'm remembering correctly. A couple of things have stayed the same, which I do like. Oh, hello, skeleton horse. That was not what I was expecting to turn and see. Uh, we have this mob area or uh, passive mob area. So you've got the, the Ba shoot and the Moo shoot over there. He's got a sheep farm and a cow farm. And then they'll just drop down here where he can kill them um, because that's what we do with mobs. We, we just we kill them. And I think, yes, he had his uh, hostile mob farm and mob spawner back in this area. This looks relatively new. I don't know what the sand is. I don't know. I don't know. Back here though used to be kind of a blacksmith area and then he started working on the station that was going to be at his base for the Beyond Vanilla Rail Network which again unfortunately did not get built. Uh, that lovely thing that happens when your server host is kind of not the best. This area also hasn't gotten completely built up. I do remember it looked mostly the same. There are going to be different I guess uh, we'll call them houses or dwelling units that were back here, I think was what the idea was. And I don't have a clue what most of the stuff is. Oh, furnace. Furnace input. I hear running uh, mine carts. So I bet if we look back behind something, where is it? Where is it? Aha. We have a somewhere down here. Aha, smelter array, yes. Rather small one, but way better than anything that I built on the Beyond Vanilla server this season. In season one, I built like two or three super smelters. I built one at spawn. I think I had one at my base that I figured was too small. And so then I started working on an even larger third one. Um, but I didn't actually have any super smelters built for Beyond Vanilla season two. Definitely something that I need to uh, get my hands on for Beyond Vanilla season three because I love super smelters. They're such a fun build. Got a little enchanting room, enchanting setup. Very nice, very nice. And this used to be all farms and wheat and uh, he was going to do something with it but I can't remember what it was. He mentioned it at one point and I, I just... I, the mine just isn't what it used to be. Hall of mob heads. It looks like an input and an output. And where is it going to? I don't know. Maybe it's a storage system? A sorting system, I guess? Lots of goodies in here. Ooh. Must be some sort of sorting system. That must be, yep, item fills. So he had an automatic sorting system. Fancy, I didn't have one of those. Don't have one of those. All I have is the big storage warehouse full of goodies and the very inefficient, slow way of filling it. Manually clicking on every single chest and dropping all my items into it. Uh, this was here. This is a little watchtower. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff to look out and watch over, but <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm being a bit of a, of a butt. I am tired and I really want to make sure I get these videos out. Let's uh, move on. Whoa! And this lag when I go right through a portal is really getting on my nerves. Let's see what is next. Aha! The Guardian Farm! 
The Guardian Farm was built super, super early in the days of the server. I think it was like a day three or four build, which is absolutely insane to have a mob grinder this powerful when you're that early on in a build. We used a design that I first saw from Cubfan on the Hermitcraft server using, well, I think it's about 1,200 fence gates and then uh, slabbed over the top to make sure that the light level was down and then it uses water flowing and uh, all of the uh, bubbles let's just go through it bubbles down at the bottom using soul sand push the mobs up they go and get funneled through this system of flowing water that's directed using the fence gates they go down this chute before they fall into the lava here fall through the lava all the way down to this spot right here where the player then stands and can kill them and get all of that wonderful XP. This also was way overpowered when it comes <laughs> into terms of food uh, because we ended up having... Oh, there's a shulker box full of prism ring too. Uh, we ended up having so much cod that that's why uh, Phantom Maple was able to build the free fish hut because there was uh, overabundance of fish. So it kind of destroyed the uh, food selling economy on the Beyond Vanilla Season 2 server, um, but that's definitely not going to be a problem with Season 3. So we've got Celsus's base. Celsus was a more recently added player to the server and I actually don't know if I've been out this way before so this is going to be new to me as well. Uh, let's see. Nope, I have seen this before. Uh, he has a couple of chorus plants on the top. I think there was a beacon here at one point. I thought I saw a beacon. Yeah, there is a beacon here. So he did manage to get a beacon pretty early on um, and it's one of those things that's unfortunate is that lots of cows that sometimes players will join servers and then they'll get bored really quickly since we had already kind of done a lot of the uh, early game stuff. Everything was in a kind of end game item sort of state by the time that Celsus joined us, which is unfortunate because it ends up resulting in people getting bored really quickly. With what we're doing for season three, that shouldn't be a problem, although we have been recruiting like crazy and I think we've got about 60 people who are looking at trying to join us for season three and it's gonna be really amazing, so stay tuned for those videos when season three starts. Just uh, doing a little bit of advertising right there. Back through the nether we go, onwards to whatever is next. And uh, there's no sign, so I don't know who's next. Let's go find out. Aha, okay. Uh, I know this base, I know this base. Whose base was this? I, I'm blanking on names all of a sudden. Hold on, let's see. Was there any identifiers over here? No? Okay, let's just do this. Skew. This was Skew's base. I keep on forgetting that. And Skew was here in the early days of Beyond Vanilla Season 2. Built this really interesting start to a base using a lot of stone bricks and had a surprising amount of diamonds early on. If I remember right, uh, Skew, yeah, had almost a full stack of diamonds, had lots of decent gear. If I actually open up Skew's inventory, yep, full on everything enchanted. And again, sometimes people just drop off the servers, they get bored, want to go and play something else or join a different server. So, uh, Shame on you, Skew. Beyond Vanilla Season 3 is going to be amazing. And, uh, well, actually, if you're more than welcome to join, if you wa ever watch this video and decide that you're interested in that. So let's uh, keep on moving. Um, I am still sad that this tunnel never got finished. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. It kind of stayed in a half finished. We'll say this is actually three quarters finished because the only thing that was really missing was the roof. Uh, we've got our portal to the end dimension, which we are not going to go through because it's really not that exciting. And we've got our, well, the original Wither Skelly farm. Uh, not really a farm, more like just it was a pretty decent nether fortress for going and trying to kill Wither Skeletons. Off to the left here, we've got my base. And off to the right, we have just a uh, bad omen farm. So we're going to skip the bad omen farm and we're going to go take a look at Northgard in its completion state right where we are at right now, which is pretty much 
just how completed it was when I built the barge, which I think was the last video that I did over here at Northgard. But, you know, getting everything in one solid video is not a bad idea. So Northgard was inspired by uh, Game of Thrones, kind of a combination of, what would you call it, I guess uh, the wall of Game of Thrones mixed in with some of the kind of Nordic style builds that you might see in a place like this. Um, originally, if you look over my shoulder there, that was going to be a castle that was inspired by Eastwatch by the Sea in the a Song of Ice and Fire books, as well as in the last two seasons? No, season seven of Game of Thrones. I think Eastwatch shows up in like the second to last episode. I don't remember. Um, whenever the episode is that they go beyond the wall to go and try and take the White Walker. Uh, that was what it was originally going to be inspired by. That was the first structure that I built here at this base, if my memory is serving me correctly. And it was horrible, and I was going to turn it into a pedestal and build a giant statue on top of it. And like a lot of other things that didn't get to that point in this area, uh, it's just it's not going to happen because we're moving on to Season 3 because we had an amazing idea by one of our members sheep uh, who will feature in videos in the future i am certain because beyond vanilla season three is gonna be amazing so let's just uh, jump down here and take a look at stuff so we came out through our nether portal over here and i built my little well because i wanted a well here in the center of this part that was going to be a town I've got my storage building over here, which I'm going to miss having all of this organized storage. I have a cactus farm that I built because I had never built one and decided that I wanted to build one and build a building around it. And I've got my villager trading, a uh, small villager trading hall full of the villagers that I uh, thought that I would need. So where is, I can't remember what this guy is. It might be my unbreaking. No, nope. I got an unbreaking three villager, mending villager. Maybe he's my efficiency villager. I think I had an efficiency two villager. Silk touch, and then my um, magic farmers, who I'm also gonna miss because they never stop replenishing their trades. Never, like never. Like I could trade with them. I, I have actually have done this in the past where I have traded an entire double chest full of melons and pumpkins and just gone back and forth between my three magic farmers and yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous and way overpowered, and I got way more emeralds out of it than I would ever possibly need. Now, we also have uh, my house that I built over there that I used a schematic from... What did I use it from? Uh, Grabcraft, I think, actually. And uh, changed it a little bit, changed a couple of the blocks around, but overall, it was mainly a Grabcraft build. I did that because I wanted to improve my building skills, and I think they've improved a decent amount, um, and that definitely helped quite a bit. We've also got over here some of the pranks. I know I mentioned the item tilter in the uh, spawn village uh, video that I did. Wow, it's really hard to do all of this in one take. Um, so the item tilter actually started off and called the item tilter because he tilted all of my items one block one block one block and that was what i would come into every single time i would load up minecraft and it was really frustrating um i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie aura admiral aura the item tilter i'm fairly certain it was you uh please don't tilt my items in beyond vanilla season three if you're not a member of my kingdom uh hint hint on what beyond vanilla season three is kind of gonna do yeah that's an act of war dude and uh, we'll be going to war with y'all. Uh, I'm not sure which kingdom you're going to be a part of, but yeah, that, that will be an act of war that will result in many casualties on both sides. Anyways, <laughs> the uh, item tilter also ended up building the kneeler, the kneeling man. And another little statue over here, which I can't remember what he was calling it. Nope, he didn't have a name for this one, as well as a lion, because tigers are hard to build. And so uh, I've got little statues in this area. I also have over here... Little Ice Farm. Fantastic little build. Easy design to do. And he's still in here. Yay! Skull Tiger. My horse is still here. Hello? I hear pillagers. There, there are some pillagers over here. Hm. 
Um, but yeah, I, so I built a stable for the horse that someone gifted me. I actually have no idea who gifted me the horse, but you know, he still exists and he will live on forever because I am going to make a world download um, and save this world so that anyone else who wants to can download it and look around and see some of the other stuff that I may also have missed. What I really want to see is, is he still down here as well? Yes, Larry the Guard. Yes, Larry the Guard, who was randomly wandering around here. I tagged him with the name, and he was the first recruit for the North Guard Army, which you'll see the rest of the North Guard Army, I am assuming, uh, in just a couple minutes. You know what? Let's go see if they are all still over here, because it was a little ridiculous, and is still a little ridiculous. All right, let's see. Yep. The North Guard Army, although it does look like it is a smaller number of, oh, maybe not. It looked like it may be a smaller number of pillagers. Uh, so I don't know if this is a bug that has been fixed or if it's a bug at all, but you know how, uh, well, maybe you don't, but mobs that have picked up items do not despawn. So I think most of these guys spawned in prior to 1.14.4 which I don't know if that changed the mechanics of how pillagers work but they're all carrying uh, crossbows which I think caused them all and causes pillagers possibly still in 1.14 to uh, never despawn so they've been over there for a few months and I just haven't done anything with them. That's the North Guard Army. They were going to get all named and I was gonna build a barracks over here where Larry the Guard is. And that was where I was just gonna stash a whole lot of pillagers. If anyone tried to raid me, I would just unleash pillagers on them and they, everyone would get shot with crossbows. That's an idea for Beyond Vanilla Season 3, the pillager trap. So let's uh, keep on moving on. We've got a lovely little tower over here that I absolutely hate. Uh, yeah, this, this tower is the inspiration for uh, why I decided to learn how to do uh, better builds because it was awful. It was going to get torn down and that just never happened. And I also got a little house over here that I do like better but still is not fantastic. You know what I really wish that they had in Minecraft? I wish that we had straw stairs or hay bale stairs. I think that would be fantastic because I'd really like to do some thatched roof, some stuff that really looks like thatched roof because I think that would be awesome. So, uh, hey, Mojang, if you ever end up watching this, give us some, some, uh, some grass, not grass, some hay bale stairs because that would be awesome. I know it wouldn't be practical for just about anything else and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but from a builder's perspective, having that as an option for a roof would be amazing. Moving on, we've got uh, the original melon and pumpkin farm in here, and we also have a little automatic or semi-automatic, uh, just nano farm. They fill these up with bone meal, flip the switch and then you just plant 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 and uh watch the magic happen my totally ethical snow farm these two little guys uh well actually those are like the fifth and sixth snow golems that i had but they are responsible for the monstrosity of a wall that you see over here uh just standing there holding down the button and digging up all that snow melon and pumpkin farm the first one is uh, two layers of each so there are three identical looking structures beneath here just simple uh, water streams into a chest not very efficient um, so two layers of melon two layers of pumpkin and I also built an automatic kelp farm that was not very efficient the only reason why there's so much kelp in here is because I uh, haven't emptied it in a while and then somewhere down below here down these stairs I built an even larger version of that melon and pumpkin farm to uh, just brute force it. It's not a very efficient design, uh, so instead of actually trying to figure out a lossless or super efficient design, I just decided that the better option would be to overcome inefficiencies by just having about 200 melon and 200 pumpkin plants, because yeah, <laughs> that's how we do it. 
So we've got, as you said, as I said, this pedestal here, which is, uh, yeah, it's ugly. We're not going to pay attention to that. But this was a project area that we're looking at right now that I really enjoyed working on. It was probably one of my favorite parts of developing this whole base because it was the first area that I really tried to plan out what I was going to do. And this was the uh, uh, dockside project. So I started off by realizing that this whole area was really, really ugly and I wanted to build a retaining wall and kind of build a industrial kind of dock area to this region of Northgard, which is what the name of my base is. It's Northgard City, which, you know, it's, uh, it's a small city, but it was getting there. It was getting there. So I built up this retaining wall and then uh, built a crane over here for loading and unloading. I built a barge over here uh, where you can see there's lots of chests and barrels on there. It's a couple of, well, there were going to be a couple of boats. So we've got a couple of boats, a shipping boat and a barge, and a couple of different dock areas in here. And what I did was, because I didn't want to leave it just plain and boring, is I came in and I actually created some things. So we've got our custom armor stands. We've got a, a couple of areas in here. This is a bar. Um, I don't remember if it has a name. I think it was just the Dockside Tavern. There was a sign at some point. Um, we've got the Dockside Warehouse, number one. We've got some people putting some stuff away, hard at work. We have the Dockside Office and Customs with uh, this guy face palming and this guy looks ashamed at something. And we also built a couple other uh, areas over here. So we had Dockside Warehouse number two. Looks uh, rather non or not very suspicious until you take the dirt out and there is a uh, secret area down there where uh, smugglers and pirates might find, uh, you know, a, a good place to stash their illicit goods. And then Dockside Warehouse number three, which I'm just gonna point out, I love the fact that this guy over here is just lazing around and uh, trying to be inconspicuously getting paid to not do any work. So there was also the Dockside Prison with the Warden. And I think if I remember right, it was, yes, this one. We'll go ahead and open this. This dude, oh, um, yeah. He is uh, tunneling his way to freedom, or trying to, but he got caught by a guard. And uh, so, of course, he's not going to be going very far at all. There. <laughs> that bothered me. Another thing I built, and you can see the progress for this construction, was this lighthouse over here. Uh, I really wanted to go with a medieval style type of lighthouse, something that may be, you know, semi-practical, but also kind of fantasy themed, so that's why it's kind of built on stilts. But I really liked the idea of using the campfires for the actual signal fire itself, uh, just placing them on top of cauldrons. I think that effect was pretty nice. One thing I may, I could see myself changing would maybe add a, a vent at the top so that the smoke could actually come up, but that would kind of, you know, defeat the purpose of protecting the fire from the elements. And I have to sneeze. <coughs> I did this. Bleh. I did just sneeze, and I am uh, just going to mute that part of the video. <laughs> it's not going to be a cut. I just don't think that I need to blow out anyone's eardrums who happen to be watching at that point. Again, one take. We're doing it in one take. Uh, so we had a kind of dockside stall area where people kind of a fish market. Uh, just a couple of different stalls down there. We have the dock sign. Dock side. Dock, side, inn, and tavern, which had storage underneath here, and never actually got the furnishings completed over here. The tavern was going to have an upstairs room with some more tables, and there were going to be tables, and I was going to put some armor stands around, but that didn't happen. Uh, we do have the dock side inn, which has very, very small rooms, but I mean, look at the view. If you stand on the bed and jump, you can see nothing. You can see the wall. Maybe the top boy had a better view. Yeah, here we go. That's a better view. You can see part of the roof, but yeah, that's that's not that's not too bad, right? <laughs> And yeah, fun, fun little build, mostly finished, not completely finished, to my satisfaction anyways. I mean, 
I like this, the uh, putting the trap doors and using it kind of as siding because I think it was a different look to the overall structure of it. But I'm not satisfied with it, and I guess I'm just going to have to live with that. Oh well, onward to better things, right? Oh, I forgot I also had the uh, lighthouse keeper's house down at the bottom. Um, and then we had the Northgard Castle area which was a fun build to make. This is the Northgard Mead Hall. And if we come in here, you'll see we've got uh, some of the Hermitcraft players because <laughs> when I put our um, head trader villager, the natural way that you uh, get that data pack from vanillatweaks.net includes all of... Oops. It includes all of the uh, Hermitcraft hermits as the default uh, heads so if you wanted to actually put your own players heads from your own world you'd have to change it and i changed a lot of them but a lot of them i did not change so we've got false symmetry grian wells knight i think that's vintage beef who doesn't even play on the hermitcraft server anymore corralis who just made his return which is awesome um, having a little fight here with tango and of course you've got me sitting there at the uh the throne because i am obviously the ruler of northgard had a little house here kind of part of this whole castle complex nothing on the inside had another house that i just kind of haphazardly threw together and then a watchtower because obviously every castle complex needs to be able to be alerted to you know raids that may or may not happen um fun little build the wall went all the way around here wasn't completed i just did the basic structure of it and uh, was gonna have a top to it and i was thinking about actually making it a covered wall there's also supposed to be i think right here yes right at that section was where i was going to do a big uh gateway entrance into the city itself uh just just a, a lot of projects that i never got around to and that was a result of numerous things because my life has been changing quite a bit over the last couple of weeks uh to last really month if you really want to get into it and that's because i like i said i think i've mentioned it before i started a new job i moved i had to get my internet set up and it's still kind of a sketchy connection um i'm playing using a wi-fi uh portable wi-fi is what i'm doing right now and hopefully i'm not going to run out of data anytime soon um oof. If I do, I'll just have to tether my phone and use that connection, even though it's a little bit slower. So, yeah, um, started the new job, so that's taking up a lot of my time. So, yeah, it's it's been it's been a thing, but uh, that is the conclusion of the quick overview of the north area and through the north tunnel in the Nether. Uh, so that's going to be part two of the world tour of the Beyond Vanilla server. This is actually the area that I'm kind of most familiar with. So I'm excited to take a look at some of the next things. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to continue in a clockwise order. I can't, I can't make it do a clockwise from this direction. Um, but so if we started it north, then the next thing would be east, and then we'll do the south, and then we'll finish up with the west. I think is what I had said we were going to do. But I don't really remember, to be quite frank, because, yeah, the days are running into each other. And uh, my 8 to 4.30 job today was an 8 to 6 job. So, yeah, I'm, I'm running on fumes right now. I definitely need to get this uh, all taken care of. And then Beyond Vanilla Season 3 starts on Sunday. So I got to get these videos taken care of. And I've got to get ready for Beyond Vanilla Season 3, which has involved a lot of, of prep work, which I'm excited about. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm gassed guys I'm exhausted but with all of that thank you for watching uh, episode 2 of this uh, part 2 of this world tour uh, next one is going to be a lot less uh, going over the base <laughs> because because i'm not gonna know where what i'm looking at i mean to be frank i'm not really gonna know what i'm looking at at all at least i know what this area is so the next couple of parts are probably going to be a lot more of wow look at this this is amazing and uh hopefully when it comes time for beyond vanilla season three to start 
we'll have a lot more community oriented uh, type of tours and a lot more of stuff to look at that's going to be really really fun um, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again for watching. If you liked the video, leave a comment. If you really liked the video, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be continuing to try and put out new videos on the Beyond Vanilla server every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, maybe uh, if you, you get a little bit of a hint of what Beyond Vanilla Season 3 is going to be about. Oh, I forgot to mention those houses over there. Eh, whatever. <laughs> um, but maybe in the next episode, I'll go into a little bit more detail. That would be fun. So uh, if you want to know more about what Beyond Vanilla Season 3 is going to be like, you're going to have to watch the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.